the anti-war films increased public impatience for disarmament. When the League of Nations finally arranged the World Disarmament Conference for 1932, expectations rose. And we are going to go to Geneva to get the nations of the world to join in and reduce this enormous, disgraceful burden of armaments which we are now bearing from one end of the world to the other. In Geneva, the conference took delivery of mass petitions collected from around the world. The millions of signatures were designed to put pressure on governments and show how people expected them to banish war. I went to one of the opening sessions of the conference when people came from all over the world petitioning for disarmament. And it was meant to be a tremendous moment we all had great hopes that there really was going to be very substantial disarmament. Australia, 112,108. The final tally was announced as the conference began. United States of America, 1,135,453. And Hawaii, 130. There are lunatics in every country who really want the attempt to organize peace to be abandoned. No one doubts that disarmament is possible, but the common man wants to know whether the governments with great military, naval and air forces are really in, their, in earnest in their desire for peace. If they are, a disarmament treaty can be framed. And if it is accepted, the whole international atmosphere will change as if by magic. But international idealism clashed with old-style national self-interest. Arriving in New York, Poland's former Prime Minister Paderewski explained the problem. Mr. Paderewski, what is your opinion about this armament and your recent efforts in order to eliminate the possibilities of war. It's a very good intention, very fine idea, but a very difficult task. Everyone expects the other fellow to disarm, but he's not ready to disarm himself.